Hi, I'm Stephen with albertaurbangarden.ca. Today, I have a very special episode for you. Over the last few months, we've had some great conversations around some of the videos where I'm taking a look at some of the garden practices and assumptions that I've implemented in my garden. So today, what I thought I'd do is actually bring you along to show you how I research these videos. Now, as you all know, I both research and script most of my videos. And the reason is, is I want to be able to bring the best possible product to you guys to help cut through some of the noise that's out there because after all, there's a lot of noise out there. So before we get to the research, let's talk about the scientific method for a moment. Scientific method kind of dictates that you start off with a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is really just a question. Then you go about trying to test that hypothesis both trying to prove and disprove it. A hypothesis is only valid in the absence of anything that disproves it and has significant amount of supporting evidence. And that hypothesis will stand until it's disproven, but it's never fact. The internet is a repository of knowledge. It has vast amounts of great knowledge, making it a perfect tool for this kind of research. But that said, just because someone like me is posting things on there does not in fact make it true. So how do you cut through the noise? These general guiding principles for researching on the internet should help you at least cut through some of the noise. Let's use an example from a recent video that Patrick and I collaborated on. What is fungally dominated compost? And is it good for your garden? So we need a hypothesis. In this case, our hypothesis is is fungally dominated compost good for our vegetable gardens? This is really broad. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to break that hypothesis down to a number of pinpoint questions. These questions are a great place to start with your searches. I generally start with Google or Google Scholar. However, there are plenty of other free journals online. Now that we're finding documents, we need to figure out if they're from reputable sources or not. A quick place to look is the web address, or the URL. If it's a .edu or .org, generally these are universities, educational institutes, or journals. It's a really good place to start. The other great place to start is government websites. Usually when they post documents that are helpful for us, They've gone through significant volumes of review and a lot of scientific rigor has gone into them before they can even be posted. In this case, the University of Cornell had an information bulletin indicating pine needles make soils acidic when used as a mulch. Upon further research, there is another bulletin from the Forest Industry Council of Australia stating that pine needles do not cause acidity in soil. If you're going to use information bulletins, Make sure that you have more than one that don't contradict each other. Articles that have been published in journals are usually the most dependable source of information. They have gone through a rigorous review process called peer review, which is conducted by other experts in the field. Related articles can often be found in the reference section of these papers, and it's a good source of information for you. Now that you have some research, it's time to take a look at that hypothesis. So you've posed a question, is fungally dominated compost good for our vegetable gardens? Well, now it's time to let the research do the work. Let the research guide the way. Don't try to force it. Don't try to write it in advance. Read the research and let it guide. Recently I did an episode on companion planting. Two sets of scientists went out to see if it deterred pests or not. Turns out their evidence and their uh, studies show two very different things. So you let the research guide it. And I presented that information to you guys to say yes, in some cases companion planting works, but in other cases it doesn't. Ignoring evidence that does not support your hypothesis is a big no-no. All it does is discredit all of the great work that you've already done. With these guiding principles, you should be able to cut through some of the noise out there and take a really hard look at whatever question you have, whatever hypothesis you want to test, without leaving your desk usually. I want to be clear, although I'm a professional biologist, I am by no means an expert. There's just simply too much information out there for anyone to be an expert in everything. This is why I script and I research all of my episodes before presenting it. 
it helps me determine which practices are supported and which ones are not in the garden before I even present it to you. Researching garden practices has led to some huge insights into practices that I have previously advocated for. They're just not supported by science. When I found that out, I presented it to you. I'm not afraid, as a person of science, to admit I don't know everything and I can be wrong. This is why the internet is such a great tool for us to be able to learn and research. A great resource I have found recently is the Garden Professor's blog Facebook page. This group is filled with highly educated scientists that devote a lot of time to helping untangle the science of gardening. What I hope to promote on this channel is not only the practices that are supported by science, but an evidence-based gardening approach. I hope that we are able to equip each other with the tools so that we can go out and generate defensible evidence in your own garden. And if I state something that you disagree with, that's fine. That's the beautiful thing about science. So we don't have to agree. We can both put out different hypotheses and see. Let's let the evidence tell us. And finally, be respectful and be kind. The wonderful thing about this community is we can have differing opinions. And we get to grow and learn together as a community. I've said this once, and I'll probably say it a few more times. Gardening is a wonderful passion and hobby of mine. And I really hope to share this lifelong journey of learning with you. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today. I appreciate it very much. And I hope you have a fantastic day.